<laughs> Namaste. <clears throat> Can you help me understand what Jesus meant when he said, Thy kingdom come, and death shall be no more? If I am only a seer, what do these words mean? <clears throat> well, first you have to be established in the seer, and then this que these questions will not trouble you. These questions will be they would not even come to you, and if they do, uh, you would intuitively know what Jesus meant by that. I don't like this type of question because you say, "If I am only a seer, what do these questions, what do these words mean?" So you're you're not even tackling the whole point about examining whether you are the seer or not. You are just speculating, like a lot of people do speculating if I am. Well, why don't you try to understand and be in the position and to clarify, can you be the seer or not the seer? Are you only an object in the ultimate seer's perspective? Or can you just be an object? And if you are an object, what will be aware of the subject perceiving you? Would it not be you? So that is a more important question for me than the previous questions, which I will talk a lot, I will answer them as well for you. But when you say, if I am only a seer, what do these words mean? Then I am going to explain what they mean, and then again you will not drink it down, you will only add it to the other, the other things you imagine you know. So you are not going to go very far like this. When we are sharing um, in satsang, it is not to grow in what I would call informational knowledge. That is not going to help you to be free. It has to be that you use the direction and the guidance given to you to verify and confirm what you have first heard you must come to know inside your heart, because you have done the work. But your answer, your, your question is, is not showing that. Now, can you help me to understand what Jesus meant when he said, Thy kingdom come? So you have given me the, the text, but you have not given me the context of why Jesus was speaking that. So, And my question is going to be for, much, for a much broader um, uh, listening. You see, What did Jesus meant when he said, Thy kingdom come? From what I remember, just uh, from these three words that you speak. This was when Jesus was teaching his disciples how to pray. Now, many people think that they know already how to pray, they just ask for things. And uh, so basically, they are just trying to get God to give them what they want, and they call it a prayer. But Jesus was teaching them how to truly pray. And he taught them, Our Father, who art in heaven, Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us of our sins, that we may forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thy kingdom come. For thine is the glory, for thine is the power, the kingdom, and the glory. Thy kingdom come would be referring to really the kingdom of truth, the kingdom of heaven, somehow mm, absorbing the personal mind which seems to stand in front of it and to somehow. Um, prevail the kingdom of God. And you make the next question, Death shall be no more. Death shall be no more. To understand this again, you have to follow what I started by saying to you. You were speculating about who the ultimate seer is, rather than finding out. When you find out, 
you'll understand the meaning of death shall be no more. Because all the beings, they passed away. Not absolutely all, because there are some beings who never tasted a physical death. They vanished from this plane of existence. They didn't die in the way that most of humanity die. Melchizedek from the Old Testament, the prophet Elijah also was carried, it says, carried away in a chariot that just somehow vanished into the space. And even in more recent times, I remember about one great saint who had both um, Hindu devotees, Muslim devotees, Sikh devotees. They were all devoted to this great saint. And when he his body passed away, there were each of these different groups were fighting about what ceremony should uh, his body be uh, put through. The Muslim said he had to be buried in a Muslim way because he was a Muslim prophet, or something like this, holy person. The Hindus were saying the same, and the Sikhs were saying the same. And then one day, they were, when they came to take his body, they all of them fighting. When they took the blanket from over the body, all they found was just flowers. And so he just vanished. Nobody ever buried that saint. So there are some who says um, who just disappeared. Nobody know what they happened. They had no burial. And there are many stories like that. But you're asking. Um, what Jesus meant, that death shall be no more. The death of your body will happen. Death of your idea of who you are, that will also pass away. But your innermost being cannot die. And He is speaking when He says, Death shall be no more, that one day, when you come to realize your true, your ultimate state, the death that you now fear, the death of the flesh, that will not be your concern, because you will know that what you are cannot die. This is what it means. So the first part, Jesus was teaching his disciples, Heavenly Father, who art in our Father who art in heaven, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this daily bread. So this is as far as I can go with you. I would just want to point out to you again. You say, if, if I am only a seer, what do these words mean? If you're only a seer, if you're the seer, then these words will not trouble you. These words, Thy kingdom come, thy kingdom has already come, and death shall be no more. Then death shall that death is no more. If if you say you are a seer, but you are not yet a seer. 